Adventures of the Saint, starring Tom Conway. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charteris and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of modern crime now comes transcribed to radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Tom Conway as... The Saint. Mind if I sit down here, mister? Huh? Oh, no, I don't mind. Thanks. Usually I get a little more enthusiasm than that. What? Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're a good-looking babe. Oh, you're just saying that to be sociable, mister. Mister, uh, what? The name's Doyle. Lola's mine. Um, how's the chicken tonight, Mr. Doyle? It's, it's okay. How would you know? You haven't touched it. Being on a train kind of spoils my appetite. So that's what's spoiling your appetite. Sure. What else? I wouldn't know. Uh, Mr. Doyle, who's paying for my dinner, me or you? Well, <laughs> now that I take a good look, I'd be glad to buy your dinner. Oh, good thing I'm not the demure type. Restrain your joy and hand me that menu, huh? Sure. Thanks. Yeah. And button your jacket, your gun's showing. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, I want some information. Listen, I want to know if the Chicago Limited's on time. Mm hmm. They're passing through town here. Yeah, thanks. Well? On the dot, Mitch, 2 30 in the a.m. Hmm. Well, it's a little past 11 now. That train stops here for 10 minutes. That ain't an awful long time, Colonel. It's long enough. Maybe. I want another drink. You don't need it. I hope Doyle's enjoying his train ride. I wouldn't know. You think he'll be glad to see us, Mitch? I want another drink. Yeah, you know something? I think he'll be so happy that uh, it's just liable to kill him. Oh, I'm closed for the night. I've gone out of business. Oh, I'll hate you in the morning. Okay, just a second. Uh... Mr. Templer? Yes, and the hour is midnight, and I'm about to go to sleep. You look very nice. Oh, you must say that to all the boys whose bells you ring. I'm not working my way through college, Simon. No. Uh, from where I stand, I'd say you'd uh, graduate. From where I stand, I'm getting tired of standing. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Come in. Come in. It's, um... A little late to begin a beautiful friendship. I'm frightened. Your eyes tell me that. And uh, they're very beautiful. You know a lot about women, don't you? Uh, Not as much as I'd like. I'm married to Jimmy Doyle. Doyle? Uh, I don't know him. I want you to meet him tonight. So uh, I can be frightened too? He's coming into town on the Chicago Limited in a few hours. Oh, you uh, want me to bring him flowers? I want you to see that he gets home. Alive. Well, the... uh... Police do fairly well at that kind of thing. I can't go to them. Oh, you're afraid to. Why? Jimmy would kill me if he found out. I see. Where is home? 49 Marble Avenue. And I'm to see that he gets there alive? You uh, haven't told me why he might not. Nor do you intend to. Why should I bother, Mrs. Doyle? Perhaps because I'm lonely and afraid. Perhaps because I'd like you to call me Madge. Hmm. Simon, I've no one else to go to. All right. I'll meet his train. When's it due? Five in the morning. Five hours to go, then. I'll go home now. Oh. Knowing that you're taking care of things, Simon. I might even be able to sleep. Pleasant dreams, Madge. Another drink, Laura? <laughs> what are you trying to do, launch me? <laughs> <laughs> Don't be that way, baby. I'm drinking right along with you. Right now, I'd say you were a couple of blocks in front of me. <laughs> hey, what time is it, anyway? It's, uh, let me see. Yeah, uh, 2.30 almost. Early hours, baby. 
Hey, well, don't tell me the train's running out of gas. That's disgraceful. That's what it is. Nah, just a whistle stop. Who's talking about whistling? I said it was a whistle stop. Nothing personal. Oh. It's awful oh. dark out. You think somebody lives in these towns? I knew a fellow once. Lived in a small town. <laughs> yeah. He was a dope. What did you see out of the window? A couple of people getting off. Some waiting to get... <gasps> hey, who are you throwing your whiskey at? I didn't throw it. It slipped out of my hand. That's all. Uh... Yeah. Then why is your hand shaking? I'm, I'm tired. <laughs> You're scared. Now, look, look, let, let's get out of this club car. Too many people. Okay, anything you say. Yeah, it's too many people. <laughs> it yeah. is kind of a switch. The girl seeing the fellow home. Yeah, funny. <laughs> then why didn't you laugh? Hey, somebody pulling the train out from under now, me. Just hold on to me, will you please? Let's see. They're just switching engines. They ought to fasten these trains down better. Yeah, this here's my car. The compartment is right along here. Oh, aren't you fancy? I just got a lower berth. Yeah. Well, I'll be seeing you. Oh, no, 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 no. Come on in, will you? Well, a girl's got to be careful of her reputation. Nobody around but even yeah, well, so... Please come in. We'll, we'll gab a while, huh? Oh, well, that's better. Okay, give me your arm. Right here. Oh. It's kind of dark in here. Why don't you put a light on... <laughs> what? No! No! <laughs> Huh? Oh, Lieutenant Flynn. Hello, Templar. What are you doing here? Is there a law against lurking on station platforms? Don't tell the commissioner. You meaning the train? Uh, it's easy to see why they made you a lieutenant. Well, oh, thanks very much. Uh. Friend of yours coming in on the limited? Uh, that's um, hard to say. Translated, you mean you're not saying. Why are you here? I'm crazy about trains. Oh, also, the department got a wire. Seems somebody on that train wasn't a very good traveler. Oh? Seems he died en route. Yes, train sickness can be overdone, huh? It wasn't exactly train sickness. What was the name of the man you were meeting again? Oh, I didn't say it was a man. Now, this fellow stopped a couple of bullets in the worst possible place. Oh? Are there any good places to stop bullets? If you're not too busy, Templar, when the train pulls in, maybe you'd like to climb aboard with me. Mm -hmm. Take a look at the fellow I'm talking about. Oh, I might not be too busy. What's his name? Doyle. Jimmy Doyle. They didn't improve his appearance. The bullets, I mean. Whoever shot him didn't have a beauty treatment in mind. You know him, Templar? Uh, his name is Doyle. Jimmy Doyle. Isn't that what you told me? You fence very nice. When did he die? Close as the medical examiner just figured it. He must have been shot around two or three in the morning. Well, it's nice to know he died in a private compartment. Whoever shot him had fun ripping the place up. He could have been looking for something. I wonder what. Yes, I'm wondering too, Lieutenant. Nice to have company. Could have been diamonds, though. Doyle collected them? I hate to tell you this, but he was a bad boy. He stole them. Oh, for shame. In Chicago. He and a couple of other bad boys. One of whom uh, wore glasses? How do you know that? Not much of a guess, Lieutenant. This is what I just picked up off the floor. Looks like a tiny hunk of crumbled tissue to it me. It came out of a sight saver package, Lieutenant. That tissue was used to wipe a pair of glasses. Let me have it. Thanks. Mm -hmm. One of the bad boys who pitched in on the Chicago deal with Doyle is a man named Kerner. The important point at the moment being, he wears glasses. Well, that tissue is mildly flimsy as evidence, but it uh, helps your thinking, huh? I don't know. Nobody heard the shots? When Doyle was killed? No, nah, it's noisy on the train. It may mm -hmm. have been going through a tunnel at the time. Well, it's been fun, Lieutenant, but... It I... could be even more fun, Templar. Oh? If you would uh, let me introduce you to Lola. And who is Lola? The kind of girl your mother wouldn't have liked. Well, since I'm not my mother, some other time, perhaps, but May I not have... be another time. We're booking her on suspicion of murder. She wear glasses? Mm-hmm. And the men do make passes. You're being too kind to me. She and Doyle were lapping up firewater all evening. She went with him to his compartment, this one. Claimed she chatted with him for a while, then went to her own berth. Nobody saw her at the important times, though. 
Too bad. It's only suspicion of murder. Walt has been chummy with lots of crooks, especially jewel crooks. Hmm? Sounds like a case. The only trouble is, whoever knocked off Doyle was after the diamonds. Lola doesn't have them on her. Lucky for Lola. Did the train stop anywhere en route? Jerkwater town named Haynesville at two. Interesting. But I... I'd as... still like to have you talk to Lola. Why? You're prettier than I am. Oh, thank you. You might, uh, you might get something out of her. Furthermore, if you do, I'll stop wondering what brought you here. Oh, well, that does it. I couldn't bear to think of you staying up nights wondering. Lead me to her. We're keeping her in compartment C, a couple of doors down from here. Keep her company. We've got to search everybody on the train. Oh, aren't you going to introduce me? <laughs> Just smile at him. Oh, I'll do my best. Well, remember, the last guy who was alone with her wound up dead. <laughs> We have to hole up in this room. Not long. You just be glad you're off of that train. Yeah, yeah. You know, I never did like cops, but one thing you got to give them credit for. They know how to search a man. And for a while back there, I wasn't sure they were going to leave the skin on me. Hey, what's the matter, Mitch? I, uh, I'm wondering where the stones are, Colonel. Yeah, yeah, so am I. They weren't in that compartment. We tore it apart. Couldn't find them. I didn't. Oh, now, wait a minute, Mitch. You were with me all the time. Sure, when we got on the train. But according to what the cops were throwing at us, somebody visited Doyle while you and me split up. Locating our berths. Yeah, but we had to take berths in different cars. We'd have been spotted too easy if we hadn't. Sure. Sure, except for the way it worked out, you could have got to Doyle's compartment before his body was found. You could have shot him and ditched the stone something. Yeah, so my friend could you. Would I bring it up if I You might, that... you might. Just to make sure that I didn't. Now, look, Mitch, there's one thing we know. Neither of us has got the stones on us now, no matter who killed Doyle. So? So do you care who killed him? I care about the stones. All right, then let's start using our heads, huh? Doyle reached the station in Chicago with the stones. We figured he'd have them with him all the time, but maybe he arranged to have them reach New York separate from himself, you see? Yeah. Yeah. All right, now I got an idea of where in New York those stones would have to wind up if that's what Doyle did. And that's where? That's Doyle's home. So, uh, why don't we drop in on Mrs. Doyle and tell her the sad news? Yeah. Yeah, that way we get a seat on the inside. Yeah, where we sit and wait for company. Good evening, Lola. Or should it be, uh, good morning? Go away. I want everyone to go away and drop dead. But you haven't even met me. I'm, uh... Simon Templer, Lola. You can drop dead, too. Oh, wait. Simon Templer. That's right. The saint, huh? That's all a girl in my condition needs. Go. Oh, Lola. What? Lieutenant Flynn told me to smile. I'm uh, smiling. Dr. West will be proud of Oh, me. I don't know. He just gives me the brush every morning. <laughs> oh, you're funny. Sit down. Thank you. But sit down slow. I don't want you shaking the train. Oh, I'll be careful. Oh, these trains shake awful easy. Or it could be I have a hangover. Oh, were you uh, drinking last night? I was drinking. Well, a, a hangover seems plausible, then. Oh, I can think of a lot better words for it than that. For example... Uh, Lola. Yeah? You're in trouble. Huh? What are you doing? Practicing to be Sir Galahad? Not exactly. Because I'm... if you are, you're wasting your time. Lola, about Doyle. Don't mention him. I can see his face right now. Half blown up. That's a fairly accurate description. Would you mind leaving me and my hangover alone? But according to what you told the police, you left him in his compartment alive. No, oh, no. Then how do you know what his face looked like? Dead. Get out of here. That won't help you much. Did you kill Doyle? You don't look like my diary. Go away. Did you kill Doyle? No. Do you believe me? I can't tell as yet. You were after his diamonds, weren't you? It's possible, but I'm not answering that one. How did you know what his face looked like after he'd been shot? All right, you got me on that. So I didn't spill to the cops because I figure I didn't have to. All right, now it's different. I went with Doyle to his compartment. We were both kind of on the drunk side, you know what I mean? Yeah, I've been there. Well, anyway, he was drunker than me, so I... I thought maybe I could pick up a few carrots, you know? Mm, I think so, yes. So we walk into his compartment. It was dark in there. The first thing that happens is Doyle gets shot and... Somebody hits me on the head before I can get a good-sized scream out. You didn't see who it was? No, no. When I came to, I was dead. The compartment had been turned upside down, and I felt rotten. I went away from there fast. That lower berth looked just like home. 
You could be telling the truth. Lean over. What are you going to do? Ouch! Hey! There is a bruise on your head. Well, that proves... One of two things. Either that your story is true or that you were clever enough to acquire that bump all by yourself. It's not the kind of thing I like to go around acquiring. Well, I don't know if the police will hold you. I suspect they won't. If they do release you... Yeah. I'd advise you to be very careful. Avoid diamonds. They're beautiful, but they might be the death of you. Just a second. Oh. Hello, Mrs. Doyle. Kerner. Kerner and Mitch. You mind if we come in? I... You don't mind. She looks all broken up by grief, don't she, Mitch? All broken up. Is that a new routine? Yeah, she don't sound like a new widow at all. Did you say new widow? Oh, don't tell me you didn't know. Didn't the cops get in touch with you? About what? I guess they didn't. I guess maybe Doyle didn't bother keeping him posted about his home address. Will you tell me what happened, please? Sure. Somebody took a sudden dislike to your husband. So you're a widow. When? Two o'clock this morning. He was on a train. People but... die on trains, too. You said the police. Yeah, he was murdered, Mrs. Doyle. He isn't bringing home the bacon. Would you mind leaving? But uh, somebody else may bring it around. Oh, we like bacon. I we'll just have to put up with this for a while. All right, Mitch, take a look around. See if there's any other entrance to the apartment. Okay. What do you want of me? Well, Mitch and I figure that you're going to have a visitor soon. We want to be in on the welcoming committee, and we ought to figure that uh, it should be a very warm welcome. <laughs> Aren't police stations attractive? Well, uh, they're useful. I guess I have you to thank for being able to walk out of there. No, forget it. Unless, of course, you really kill Doyle. I'd never kill a man. Why not? I like him. Now, you might like diamonds even more. I might, but I don't. Well, it's uh, been nice meeting you, Lola, but I have... Uh, a... Simon, why are you in such a hurry? Oh, I've got a special date. Oh, who is? A widow. What's so special about a widow? I just want to see if she's married. Hey, Kerner. Yeah? Time's passing. Well, we got lots of it. Back door's bolted, and all we gotta do... All right, there it is. Grab her. I got my hand across her mouth. She'll be quiet. Okay, we kill the lights and wait door's unlocked, and after a while, Junior out there is going to get impatient. We'll try the handle, find that the door is open, and walk right into... Oh, hey, let it wrestle, friend. It's a... This shouldn't take very long. Madge, put the lights on. Bye. Huh. You had a glass jaw. Oh, Simon, I'm so glad. So glad. So am I. But when you rang the bell, I was terrified. And then when the door opened, you weren't there. You, you took too long answering the doorbell. I thought maybe something might be wrong, so I kicked the door open and ducked to a side until the fireworks stopped. This gentleman with the glasses here... That's Kerner. Hmm. No one's going to make passes at him either, except the coroner. He's dead. The other... Mitch. Yes. He'll recover. Hmm. Kerner was near the door. Mitch fired. The gun's lying on the floor near him, and he hit Kerner instead of me. A very pleasant error. Simon. They told me Jimmy is dead. He is. He was killed, wasn't he? Yes. Why? He was carrying a tidy parcel of stolen diamonds. Kerner and Mitch were trying to remove them from him. Apparently, they'd helped in the original theft. Oh. So they came here to wait for... Whom? Not for Jimmy. They knew he was dead. The next... I think you could use a drink, and not a soft one at that. Where can I find the... the... In the kitchen. Come on. Jimmy kept everything in the... Behind the door. Shh. Bolted. I'm going to make it easier for our unknown friend outside. Get over to a side match in case we start trying bullets. Hello, Lola. Oh, oh. Uh, Come in and shut the door behind you. Simon, I... I'll do it then. 
Lend me your bag, Lola. Oh, you mustn't think I... I won't. Till later. Mm-hmm. No gun? Of course not. Oh, you may have your bag back. You also may have uh, dropped the gun someplace else. Uh, Madge, this is a lady named Lola. Lola, Mrs. Doyle. Who is she, son? A girl with a lower berth who strayed into the wrong compartment. Let's go into the living room. Simon, I came here because I was afraid for you. Or for the diamonds? No, it wasn't that I... Uh, is there objects on the floor bothering you? Oh. Only one of them's dead. This one. Uh, Mr. Kerner. Nothing interesting in his pockets. As for Mitch... But Simon, he wouldn't have the jewel. Uh, let's say he shouldn't have. But he has. Look. Rings? Necklace? Simon. Yes, half a dozen pieces. The only question is, are they the things Doyle was bringing in from Chicago? Uh, where's your phone, Madge? Over there. Thanks. Uh, Mitch is starting to come to. One of you had better take that gun. I've got it. Uh, hello, Lieutenant Flint, please. Uh, point that gun at Mitch. I am. Huh? If he acts up, don't be delicate. I won't. When I think of how he made Jimmy look, I... Mm-hmm. <gasps> Flynn, Simon Templer, uh, would you mind reading off a list of the stolen jewels Doyle was supposed to have on him? That's right, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Fine. Oh, no, Lieutenant. Not intellectual curiosity, you see. I have exactly those jewels with me. Not to mention a corpse and a killer. The address is 49 Marble Avenue, Apartment C. Uh, and, oh, uh, Lieutenant, don't hurry. I'm having fun. Than the jewels you found on Mitch. Are uh, part of the Chicago loot, yes. Uh, only one thing bothered me. What's that? Madge, Mitch couldn't have shot Kerner. The angle's wrong. The angle? Yes. Besides, why should either of them have uh, started shooting? They didn't know who would be coming through the door. Simon, I, I didn't want to get involved, but I shot Kerner. Mitch was holding his hand over my mouth. I had a hand free. I didn't want them to kill you, Simon. Uh, we're in uh, unanimous agreement on that. As for Lola, I... I don't like the way you're looking at me. Oh, you and Madge standing side by side. A, a very pretty picture. Don't talk to me about pictures. They got frames around them. You just said the stuff you found on Mitch is part of the stuff Doyle had with him on the train. That's right. Well, that proves Mitch killed Doyle and stole the diamonds. No. It merely proves that the diamonds were not on the train. What? Look... I never even got through high school. For me, you have to make it a lot simpler. Well, I'll be glad to. Everyone who walked off the train this morning was thoroughly searched. No one could have got away with the jewels. Therefore, the jewels weren't on the train. Not when it reached New York, that is. I think I know what you mean, Simon. Yes, probably because you got through high school, Madge. However, where does that leave us? It leaves us with a stop the train made at around 2 o'clock in the morning at a small town named Haynesville. I remember that. That's where Kerner and Mitch got on. Doyle saw them. He got scared. So that means they got to be the ones who killed him. It uh, means something else, Lola. It means that other people could have got on the train at Hainesville, too. You mean someone else is involved? Someone we don't know about? No. Then you'd have searched these other people you mentioned in New York. The stopover at Hainesville was um, how long, Lola? Around ten minutes. They switch engines there. Which means that someone could have got aboard the train, shot Doyle, taken the diamonds, and then got off the train at Hainesville. But who could have done that, Simon? You, Madge. Man, that's ridiculous. I was You here. saw me at midnight, did a very pretty song and dance, and then left. You then took a plane to Hainesville, met the train, and your husband there killed him, and flew back to New York. No, I... Oh, it'll be easy to trace the plane, Madge. If anyone thinks of it. I have. What makes you think I'll let you pass those thoughts on? Oh, you won't be able to help yourself. True, you've uh, a gun. But you've already killed two men. Uh, Lola doesn't approve of killing men. Lola! I've got her! Oh, good, yes. Simon! Uh, uh. You'd better let me have that gun. Thank you. You... Better you save are... it for a jury, Madge. Because you'll be seeing one. <laughs> You have been listening to another transcribed adventure of The Saint, the Robin Hood of modern crime. And now here is our star, Tom Conway. Ladies and gentlemen, democracy demands an active faith, a 
dynamic struggle against the fanatics who would destroy our national unity with a poison of prejudice. We must protect ourselves and our families against prejudice by accepting or rejecting people on their individual worth, by refusing to listen to or spread rumors against a race or religion, by speaking up wherever we are against prejudice and for understanding. Remember, freedom and prejudice cannot exist side by side. If we choose freedom, we must fight prejudice. This is Tom Conway inviting you to join us again next week at the same time for another exciting adventure of The Saint. Good night. of The Saint was written by Louis Vitties. In our cast, you heard Gloria Blondell as Lola and Joyce McCluskey as Madge. Paul Richards and Peter Leeds played Kerner and Mitch. Shepard Mencken was Doyle and Ken Christie, Lieutenant Flynn. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charteris, is a James L. Safier production and is directed by Helen Mack. Tom Conway is soon to be seen in the Warner Brothers production of Gold Diggers in Las Vegas. All you Saint fans will be glad to know that the Saint comic books are on sale at all newsstands. Your announcer, Don Rickles. NBC, the National Broadcasting Company.